that already over here. But uh, how did he get comments already? I mean, I said that I didn't even put the go live yet, and he was already commenting. What's and happening, when... Frank? Uh, Frankie was a bit disappointed. There was no Instagram questions, so uh, I took his questions from uh, from Facebook. <laughs> Steve, you're gonna have to tell me what to do with uh, with Instagram. You're gonna have to give me the logins and everything. Yeah. All right, so we'll wait until a couple of minutes people to come on. And uh, Gigi, did you see us before? Before even saying, how did you? He said, ciao ragazzi, but I just clicked on going live, buffering. Sorry, sorry, let me see. Well, what's buffering over here? Well, my internet says strong, strong. What's happening, guys? What's happening? Uh, I wore the walks with Lenny, um, uh, cap, uh, David. I'm sure you know the, the, our friend, the Lenny, obviously. All right. So Steve, you're good. Um, are you good to go? I'm good to go. I'm always good to go. You're good let's go. Good. Let's go. All right. Let's, uh, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. You need a bit of the spirit of radio, Steve. Cari amici sportivi, welcome back to another edition of the Milan Weekly Podcast. Here we talk everything Milan, uh, pandemic Milan. We uh, are back in Sweden, Milan. And, uh, well, we're not professionals. Nor do we pretend to be. Stevie P. Oh, sorry, I'm pointing there. Stevie P, Vinny T. Always faithfully here. We do have a third guest waiting for us online. We're trying to figure it all out. Thanks for the uh, live viewers. TVP, how's your week been? I know it's uh, week uh, three uh, for you. It's day 174 of quarantine. How, how are you holding up over there? How's everything? Settimana, fine settimana de Pasqua, Vinge. Yes, we yes. We ate a nice, beautiful lamb. Very we nice. had a nice sit-down meal with the family. We tried to connect via other uh, social platforms. Uh, and, uh, you know, we made the best of what we could do. Very nice, very nice. And uh, did you? Uh, is that the reason that maybe we did not get presidential points this week? Presidente was in some sort of preparation mode. Can you, can you please, Stevie P, bring out your inner Bob Ross and explain to us, paint us a picture on how these presidential points did not come to be this week. Yeah, so guys, this week, it's a very interesting story. Uh, Presidente was in the control room, uh, basically in the bunker. Yeah, the mahogany chair, the the, the cigar smoking in the background, the radio uh, from uh, 1934 playing a beautiful soundtrack. Uh, and he got this, this, this vision, this vision from the Milan club members of a tournament. He wanted to create, Vinny, this tournament that would enchant all the Milan clubs around the world. And from Medzi, the, the, the engineer, the brain behind this of the Milan-Montreal uh, fan club came up with this uh, online tournament style, FIFA knockout, st uh, knockout stage style of, of, of championship where Milan would play Milan every single time and Milan would be guaranteed to win every single time. So Vinny, he started to sketch on the, on the walls. Vinny. He was writing with the pencil on the walls. Let's say we do this and let's say we do this. And how can did, I create this bracket? bracket. He like did his own eight. bracket. If Milan starts at the 32nd position and plays Milan at this type of, at this quarter, will Milan make it to the final playing against Milan? Will Milan win? And because of all these calculations, Vinny, plus the shortage of oxygen in his house, we did not get the presidential points this week. <laughs> so as uh, as I'm wearing this uh, beautiful burgundy uh, turtleneck, which Steve has uh, one as well waiting for him, that's how our presidential points did not come to be. He's made up this FIFA tournament online. Guys, check it out. He's going to probably post it, even though he's got a Commodore 64 at home. But uh, Steve, let's bring him in right now. 
Uh, let's let let's bring him in uh, right away. We have here online VJ VJ Raman. VJ, I'm I'm not even gonna try to int introduce you. I'm gonna let you introduce yourself. I know Steve keeps on interacting with you on Twitter. I see that uh, most of your articles are always posted up. Here's your time. Who are you? What do you do? Here's the here's the time to to, to put yourself over, as they would say in the wrestling world. Go ahead, VJ. All right, uh, good night, guys. Good night, everyone. Ciao a tutti. Uh, first of all, I want to say, Vinny and Steve, thanks a lot for having me on. I greatly appreciate it. I've been following podcasts for a little while now, so I always enjoy it. And I like, I love the fact that you all have no BS. That is, that is the best part of it. Talk, talk, no who is bad. Talk from the heart, and that, that is why I love you. I love you guys. Podcast. VJ, uh, well, VJ, a, uh, VJ, 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 yeah. before you continue. Just right. tell everybody that Sicilian accent that you have. Tell us where you come from. <laughs> I feel like you, you try to bring me into the Sicilian We are like, <laughs> but you know, I am not the part of Sicilian we are like. <laughs> for only from the Southern Caribbean of Trinidad and Tobago. <laughs> But you do. Uh, I I know we you write a couple of. Uh, tell who do you write for? I know we can find you on Twitter. Here, go ahead and plug yourself. Right, right. So I'm at uh, Trini Sports Guy. I write for a few websites: Football Italia, uh, SembraMilan.com, BTL. Um, I, I've written for Vavel. I write. Um, I also write cricket and on cricket and tennis as well. For oh, the cricket is mainly like last word on sport cricket. And well, in tennis, I write, um, I, have a, I have a blog uh, on WordPress, and I also write for Vavil. I write um, a couple of tennis articles for Vavil. So those are the main, main ones I, I write. Oh, very. So, so uh, how we, pre uh, we're not professionals, but it seems that you're a professional, and uh, Steve always seems to be enjoying your pieces <laughs> and uh, what you write. But <laughs> we, we appreciate that uh, Steve asked you to come up with the presidential points pre presenter because, you know, our president right. is taking a time off. And uh, Steve, I believe Vijay told us he's got like five presidential points. Away. Is, that, is that correct, Vijay? Yeah, well, I, I, let's just say I narrowed down to five. I had like okay. from, the, from the first time Steve uh, made the offer, a bunch of uh, questions just popped into my head. I was like, okay, let me just narrow it down to five. Keep it, keep it, keep, keep it to, to, to studio time. Let's put it that way. Yeah. I mean, it is so, Monday night. We can't go into Tuesday morning. Yeah, man. <laughs> so I love, so, I love the accent. I love the so accent. So let's Boy. let's let's inform everybody, Vinny, that that. That VJ doesn't look like his his image on the screen, right? He's not no, a no. white. He's not a white, a white, a white circle with a gray background. He's, he's probably actually a living person, a handsome, a very that. handsome man. <laughs> probably doesn't want to, you know, you know, uh, put this, you know, in a, in a position where he's better looking than us. So yeah. thank you, <laughs> VJ, over there. But well, we're we're here waiting for your questions. We have no preparations. Go ahead. You are the president for this episode. Right, right. So let's start. Well, as you all know, I I cover a lot of um, how shall I say it? Uh, articles from back in the day, like 30, 40 years ago at time. So some of them, let you know one time will be from before. It wouldn't be not all will be modern questions. Some will be from like before, right? No problem. Right. But I know I know as you say, you give a blank check. So I go it all out. Right. So the first one, let's start. I see, I see Vinny, um, CV taking a sip of water. He's, he's very, he's prepared, he's prepared. <laughs> but Vinny, I see what you do it to prepare, so that's good too. I got the beer, I got the beer. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know we are prepared. <laughs> right, so the first one I have is, what are you all each favorite Milan moment? Since you all been Milan fans for however long, what are your favorite moments? Vin Vinny, let's start with you. Ah, uh, favorite Milan moment. Uh, yeah. You know, we we talked about. You can only about, pick one. Or if you want to pick, pick two, one. But if you could narrow it. No, no, we, we 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 spoke about this a couple of weeks ago. We we're talking about that. Uh, you know, two nothing down uh, game and come back with Seedorf three two. But I would probably say the Champions League final of two thousand three for me because 
I had just recently moved to Ottawa. I did not know anybody in the city. I just met this one guy that uh, knew somewhat of, uh, yeah, it's funny, Steve, it's funny. Somewhat of the English League. He's like, let me bring you to this pub. And I remember watching us uh, beat Juventus, screaming my head off in this pub that nobody knew what the hell I was doing. Like, who's this crazy guy uh, screaming? But I got to probably say 2003 uh, World Cup, I mean, um, Champions League uh, final for me. Because of that moment, I was in Ottawa. <laughs> It would have been great if Bila could actually win the World Cup as well after each half, right? It would have been nice. It would have been nice. It yeah. would have been great. Yeah. Uh, yes. Have you, have For me, it's the revenge of Istanbul. Uh, nothing felt greater to beat the exact same team that we lost to in uh, in Istanbul again in Athens, winning again another Champions League. Uh, I think it just brought justice to that. Champions League that got away from us. So for for me, uh, VJ, uh, I see the the patch with seven Champions League, but my heart always sees it completing that number eight uh, because that was uh, that was the Champions League that got away from us. And uh, watching it live with uh, Vinny, your cousin uh, Giovanni Arcadi, who will uh, who will also appear as the hygiene specialist in next shows. Yeah, we uh, gotta get him on. Yeah, because he's a sanitary expert apparently. Yes, uh, yes. All those years of schooling to learn how to wash your hands properly. So uh, we remember watching that game with him and uh, and uh, and and going through those up and downs of uh, of Istanbul. The Athens Champions League victory for me is my moment. But okay. but Steve, you know what? Let, let's let's reverse the, the the tables because people ask us all the times. So let's ask VJ. VJ, what is your favorite moment as a Milanista? Well, just like you, Vinny, it's the 2003 Champions League final. And, I mean, what, what made it special was um, this is probably something that will never happen again, at least maybe not for, for us Milan fans, is that not only did Milan beat Juve in the final, forget, okay, the, the match itself for neutrals, and I stress neutrals, and even probably for, for Milan and Juve fans may, may not have been the most exciting. But at the end of the day, when you have a match like that, you're meeting one of your, well, who personally I consider you very biggest rival, right? And yeah. you're, meet, you're meeting you're meeting one of your biggest rivals in the final, and you and you win. It really doesn't matter whether it's a five four or nil nil and penalties, right? So the fact is that you Milan captain Maldini was the one lifting the trophy, and added on to the fact that Milan beat Inter in the semifinals made it. I mean, if doubly satisfying to beat your two biggest rivals in in the, in the two knockout rounds, the last two knockout rounds, to win the biggest competition in European football, it really doesn't get any better than that. And I, I to, to me personally, I believe, um, like how Stevie mentioned, you know, he brought up Istanbul, and just like how for for me personally with Istanbul, I try to look at it that it was fate that Liverpool won. So I really look at it; it really was fate. Milan won in two thousand three because Milan beat Inter by way of away goals, even though both teams played the San Siro, and then to come and win on penalties again. You know, I believe it was fate. So that really was the the, the biggest moment for me. Uh, as a Milan fan, all these years. There we go. There we go. What, yeah. what else you got for us? We're, we're we're starting off on the right foot. What else you got? For right, us? Uh, the right foot. Right, right. So for me, after after Ancelotti, uh, so I'm putting a little context into the second question, right? So for me, after Ancelotti left to, to go to Chelsea in 2009, if 2009, right? My I the first thing that really came to my mind to take over Milan was Frank Riker, right? He went because if you look at it, he went to he when he was at Holland, he, he guided them to the semifinals. They lost out to Italy in semifinals on um penalties, remember? Or he, he taught the trip and the he, he, he told um Francesco told those great penalties, penalty saves and stuff, right? Then he went to Barcelona, he revived Barcelona. Barcelona hadn't won anything for six years. He revived Barcelona. Yes, Ronaldinho played a lot of a, a large part in it, and he had Charles in his in his stuff. We were only great players there. But Rijkaard was the manager to guide that team along to success. And so I really wanted Rijkaard to take over when Ancelotti left in 2009. So I put in this question to you guys: How how you all think about that in terms of had Frank Rijkaard took him, took him over Milan in 2009, would Milan be in a better position now? And even if it wasn't specifically 2009, maybe it could have been a few years later self when his his coaching his coaching was still at a, a, at a high level worldwide. What, what do you guys think about it? 
TV, you can take this one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so uh, for me, VJ, to be very honest with you, uh, I think we would still be in the same spot because I don't think it really, after Ancelotti left, you know, and we started to to, to sell off some of the, the high-profile assets that we had, uh, you know what, it, it, go, it boils down, VJ, to we never had a plan as an organization of how to, how to rebuild uh, the loss of these uh, senatori or these uh, these great players that we had, right? So the Primavera, unfortunately, wasn't producing or it was producing, but like, example, Obama Yang in the Primavera, but cannot fit in these teams that 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 we just mentioned here. Uh, it, no one no one would be able to fit, right? But there had to be some kind of plan, you know? And, and, and I get what Rijkaard did at Barcelona, but Barcelona had had a plan. They had a, 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 a we now know now, you know, in hindsight this 2020, they had a joker up their sleeve, which is now Lionel Messi. And they had, you know, Ronaldinho, and you mentioned Iniesta and Xavi, uh, j- just to name a few, right? The adding Dani Alves and buying and, and 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 doing that proper mix of purchasing talent and growing talent. And unfortunately, Milan didn't have that. So I think Rijkaard... Coming to Milan, okay, so Allegri takes over uh, soon after, wins uh, the wins Scudetto with, an, or again, a great team. But then what was the plan after? Everybody started to leave. They needed to sell money. Silvio needed to get back some money. Finvest was putting pressure on him. I don't think Frank Reichardt was going to be able to get us out of that. I, I think any manager we put in that situation after 2009 when Ancelotti left, and guys, let's face it, he might have left for a, for a reason. He might have left for another challenge. But he kind of probably knew what was going to happen to Milan after. We got to give him some some of that, right? Uh, uh, the money at Chelsea was probably better. Milan was not going to pay him that much. And, and the shift of the Premier League was happening at that time too, right? So a lot of money was being invested in the Premier League and the money was there. It was no longer in Serie A. So to answer, like I'm giving you a long answer to a to a very uh, a question that I could answer shortly, just to give everybody some context, I don't think Frank Riker was gonna was gonna was gonna be a a better uh, option than what we had in Allegri at that time. Yeah, no, Steve. Uh, you know, on, on the same wavelength, it's not like you know. Yes, I love Frank Riker, but. If we got to look at the history and what we've done, you know, like the whole senatory leaving was in 2012. And, you know, we're talking about 2009. And, and how many coaches, how many legends did we burn? So, you know, I, I do not think it, it, it's easy, easier said right now at this point to say, you know, Reichard wouldn't have done anything differently. But uh, looking at, the, you know, looking at this, uh, at the team, the way they did the last couple of years, I, I do not really believe that he would have been able to do anything different, especially at that time in 2009, like you were saying, Steve, you know, like, you know young players and look, look how we were left, look how we were left uh, in, in, in that position, right? After all this, and I thought he left, so... No, Kevin Constant, VJ. Kevin, Kevin Constant. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Kevin Constant, <laughs> and uh, so no, VJ. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't think I don't think right guard would have been the the, the and, right. And to, uh, and to add to VJ's question, Vinny. Yeah, we're still at that point now. Yeah, exactly. We're so, still at that yeah. point now, VJ. It, it, you could you could put in whoever you want in this team right now. If you don't have longer than a three to five year window on this guy's contract. He will fail. And we've been seeing it. We gave it. We, we know we, we tried with Gattuso. Giampaolo's experiment was, was a failure. Now we have Pioli. Now they're looking at the Ragnarok. We don't know how to pronounce his name. Uh, Ragnar- yes, Ragnar- 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 you know, the, yeah. if he doesn't have a three to five year window and the fans manage their expectations, he will fail again. Gazidis will fail again. Milan will fail again. Yeah. All right, yeah, well, we're on a roll here, VJ. Let's go. Question number right. three. Right, right, right. So this one is a bit more modern, right? So I've been thinking about this now. A few years ago, again, I'll give it some context. A few years ago, I looked at Milan team and I said, okay, we had Donna Ruma as the as the goalkeeper, Romagnoli in the center, Locatelli in the middle, and Cotroni up front, right? You know, we always talk about the spine of a team, of a football team fit to be strong, right? 
Well, yeah. if uh, look at Italian control, they're not there anymore. So we just have Donnarumma and Romagnoli. So I was thinking about who who else I could think about for for Milan to have a core. And tell me if you all agree with this or this will be, or you wanna take out a player or add, a, add another player, right? So I'm thinking. No, this is this is besides all the transfer rumors, right? So I'm thinking yeah. Donnarumma, Romagnoli, Theo, Benesse. This one, this one might be a little controversial. Paqueta and Liao. Those are the players who I personally believe Milan should build around. Now, obviously, um, all of them are at different levels because Romagnoli is the captain. Donnarumma is one of the best goalkeepers already. Um, in half a season, Theo has taken to, to the San Siro like a, like a Dr. Water. Benesse took a little while, but he has done better in 2020. Paqueta, obviously, everybody might have different opinions about that. And, of course, Liao. In my opinion, is the one Paqueta needs time, right? So I was thinking about that in terms of who Milan can use now. I'm talking about besides who may leave and who might come in, right? Who Milan can use now as a core of group of players who Milan can build around. Obviously, someone like Ibra and are not considered because Ibra stayed here to the maximum I see him probably being there's maybe two more years, right? To sort of guide the players along. So these are the six players who I personally believe Milan can use to build around the future. feature. Let me know your, your guys' thoughts. Vinny, if you want to start, take you this know, one. You, you know, I was going to say this. Uh, I, I completely agree with you with the players that that, that you picked and even saying Paqueta, and people might jump, you know, to conclusions like, oh my God, Paqueta, but I'm sorry, guys. If we have given, even in the past, Bakayoko, more than several chances. How can we judge Paqueta from the non-chances he's had? So we, we want to give Chalonoglu uh, starter starts after starts after starts after starts when, you know, he disappoints us one time out of ten. Asking Steve is probably be like disappoints us. Uh, sorry, I said one at time out of ten. He, 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 he makes us happy one time out of 10. Steve would probably say one time out of 50, but uh, I'm with you on Pagata. Uh, you know, Donnarumma, the only problem I see with Donnarumma is that I think the price that he might come uh, come with, I think it might be too tempting uh, at a certain point. Uh, Steve, I don't know, like, you know, he, he spoke about Romagnoli, he spoke about, but for me, I think where it falls down here is the Donnarumma. Uh, I, I believe from my, from, from my opinion, I think the offer will come that's going to be too good to say no to. And in the financial situation that Milan is in, I do not see why we keep on repeating, Steve, right, that this is a business, this is a business. Stop thinking about Lere delle Bandiere in the Maldinis, but uh i think the the one key part there uh might be donnarumma because of his you know we get rid of romagnoli for a certain amount okay that's fine but the donnarumma is there is where like can you build on him sell him steve i don't know if you agree with me yeah it, it's uh, it's it's a good question there vj but uh, like i get the players that you're mentioning you know the well i'll start with layout you know, like Leao, I'm all for giving them a chance, and again, again, that window has to be uh, has to be open for them to to have that chance. But your your the spine the spine that we're looking at right now is very very young, and and because it's very young, I I need to believe in the management that they're gonna surround them with the right people for them to develop. So it's all for grabbing a guy like Leao who's who looks like a raw talent, but guys, let's face it, he's only scored two goals. He he, it's not like he's lighting up the lamp, right? Does Milan have time to wait wait for someone like Leao? Well, it, it doesn't look like we've had it in the past because we didn't have time to wait for someone like Cutrone or Locatelli. And then you go Paqueta, the same thing, right? We get him with uh, with with a lot of a lot of pressure, and, and the situation is not good. The situation is not good. A revolving door at coach, a revol revolving door at management. Again, if you're not going to give him the time and surround him with players who are going to mentor and develop, Paqueta will fail as well. The only the bright spot is Ben Asad, and Ben Asad is because he's already played in Serie A. Those two former that I that I mentioned have never played in Serie A. And Paqueta is the one that's that's got hit the hardest by that because it's it's really a different game between uh, 
uh, the Brasileiro and 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 Serie A, right? We've seen that. Romagnoli, uh, for me, uh, I think it's easier to replace a goalkeeper than it is to re replace a center back. I would keep Romagnoli till you have no choice to sell him. And it's not because I don't like Donnarumma. I like Donnarumma, but the price tag that he's going to demand, and I hope this Milan management sticks to a price tag of around 70 million because that's what I think he's worth and nothing lower and no exchange yeah. of players for the love of God. I don't want people's garbage back uh, for me giving up my prized possession. I want money and I want to decide what I want to do with this money. Uh, Donnarumma will leave at a certain point, guys. Let's face it. Uh, I've come to terms with it. I don't know if everybody else has come to terms with it, but for me, the only two on that list that are really key to build on right now, and if we're talking just youngsters, is Romagnoli and Benesser. Okay. Like and and I'll add Tio Hernandez there too. But uh, but Tio uh, Tio is a guy, Steve. That uh, you know what? Uh, uh, he, he continue playing like this for another year or two, and somebody comes knocking with a hundred million. That's the kind of guy exactly. that you're gonna get rid of. Look, I don't yeah, think no, he, no, I don't no, think. No, no, sorry, Steve. You go ahead. Yeah, I, I don't think he's a hundred million dollar left back. To be very honest, with you because he's terrible. He he's not terrible, but he has some work to do on the defensive side. And, and and yes, I would include him in that group of players, but those are the only three for me because they've proved it on the field. The other two, you know, VJ, uh, I'm at this point in my life, almost 40 years old, following Milan since I was uh, since I was eight or nine years old. I'm fed up of the fairy tale, right? I, I want to see what these guys are able to do on the field. Right. Okay. Good All questions. Right, uh, Good questions, BJ. Go yeah, because yeah. you know we always talk about the the, the spine of a team, but then it, Stevie, it goes back to what you said about the plan. Because okay, let's say let's say they do bring in um, Ragnick or whoever might be the, the new coach manager, however they want to structure, right? And he he, he comes and say, okay, here's what we're in twenty twenty. Let us make you were saying a three to five year plan, right? So let's make a three year plan and keep keep these players. Now, obviously, it's going to take some convincing for some of these players, especially someone like Donnarumma, because you all know who his agent is, right? The infamous Mino Raya, yeah. right? He always he makes his money by shifting his players around. It's why Ibra never stays anywhere for long. It's why Pogba never stays anywhere for long. It's why Harlan has is, is been linked with Real Madrid as we speak, even though he's been at Dortmund for a couple of months. You know, so that 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 is that one is iffy. But if he could come in and say, okay, we're telling these guys we can build around you. And give us, let's make a three year plan. He is going to be the manager and get everybody get everybody involved. No, maybe, as you say, uh, maybe I'm talking in a sort of fairy tale way as well, right? Because I tend, it's interesting because I tend to get attached to, to certain players, right? And I'll have a question yeah. about that later. I get attached to certain players. So, like, and especially like youth team players, right? So, someone like, like Donnarumma, that's why, you know, that's why it was hard for me when, when Luca Italian and Katrina, because I mean, not only because they, 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 I saw talent in them, but because they are Primavera players. So as a, as a Milan fan, even though I'm not Italian myself, or even European, I like the fact that Milan could have a few um, players that came through the Primavera and, and make a contribution, right? It might not be like five, six, seven, as it was, say, in Baresi and Malini, Costa Curta days. But if they could have like a few had come through, and and be any team, be any sport, and make a country. So that is why it was hard when Locatelli yeah. and Petronella because they are primavera players. But, it, so that's why it'll but be it's hard twofold. For it's twofold, VJ. It's twofold right. with that, right? Mm -hmm. So the primavera player, yeah, you're attached to him. But the primavera player, if you're developing some sort of talent that does attach itself with a price tag, hey, look, we just saw Inter do it. They sold off primavera players for. For money that got them after, uh, got them out of the FIFA uh, the financial fair play, so like it has right. to be a business where you develop some talent, some talent will stay, some talent will leave. But Milan 
throughout the years has done a terrible job at selling players. And, so and, and even even an example like look at Ali to uh, to Sassuolo, right? There was a, that, that that was like a destructive and, destructive. And, and, and Jamie, move. Jamie Drummer on the comments saying, "Why did we sell Look at Ali? But uh, why did we sell yeah, him? It's not exactly. why did we sell him? Is that why did we buy him in the first place? No, like yeah. the, the money that we spent on the guy. Yeah, so like it, it's a good question. Why did we sell him? You know, like Look at Ali had his chances, guys. He it, it's just Milan don't have the time to wait around for Locatelli right now and that's again goes to development and and goes to what's the plan for these young players unfair for Locatelli but maybe Sassuolo he reignites his career that, that that's okay that's gonna happen but that can happen if you're Milan that can happen because that has to be identified as a talent that you will sell or you will keep and groom that's going to make an impact on your team the 12 yeah. million 11 million whatever we sent to Sassuolo Cheap, guys, very it's, it's very cheap, man. It, like yeah. you know, hey, like Sturado, Sturado, guys. He got he, he was Sturaro, he, Steve. Sturado, Sturado, whatever his name is. He uh, garbage from you. Know, eighteen million, eighteen yeah. million, eighteen million for garbage. So, they sold. Oh, oh um, that was this with uh, Genoa. Oh, right, right, yeah. right. Well, we're gonna, right, uh, yeah, right, right. but uh, good. A, good, uh, a good question, nonetheless. Uh, I feel like we're on a roll here. Go ahead, I, I like these presidential points, VJ. Go ahead, go ahead. Right, right. I appreciate that. Thanks, guys. Right, so question number four. Um, I was thinking again, this is something I was thinking about recently. I had a discussion with a couple of people about it. Now, now me personally, again, I'm gonna add some context. That me personally, I don't believe in the whole greatest ever thing, I don't believe there's such a thing as the greatest player of all time, of anything, whether it be any sport, right? I believe it's the greatest of that era, right? But I was mm -hmm. thinking about if I was to make the greatest Milan team of all time, right? 11 uh, and, and, and 11, right? So I thought about it and I came up, let me see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I came up with seven names that I personally believe it have to be there, right? These seven have to be there. For my personal opinion, in a greatest Milan team, and the other four you could kind of fit in, however you you see, right? So let me tell you guys who's my seven, right? So Baresi, Maldini, Rijkaard, Rivera, Colet, Van Basten, Nordal, right? Those are the seven. If I'm making a greatest Milan team of all time, out of the eleven players, those are seven that to me personally have to be there. And the other four you could you could fit in however you see you could fit in the goalkeeper, the the other center back, the other right back, the other midfielder, maybe the other striker according to what system or formation he decide to use. So yeah, you're, you guys, gonna, you're gonna have to make some space for Kaka there. If you're yeah. going generational, there you you touch generations, except the generation that's closest to us. You're gonna right. have to you're gonna have to you're gonna have to inject Kaka somewhere, and in it's gonna be eight players, and the rest uh, the rest you can you can you can have yeah. a discussion you on, right? So many, right? People right, so are mentioning so Kaka. So you add in Kaka to D seven, or you wanna take out one and add in Kaka and then put in another? What was your opinion on? Ah, the thing is, you have too many forwards now. You have Van Basten, you have uh, Noel, you have uh, you have Rivera, you have you have uh, you have a Tridente well, there. Uh, you have well, a, Rivera, a, a... Rivera could play a little deeper. So I, I was thinking Rivera deeper. Not me two. Okay, so if you go with two strikers, I have Van Basten and Nodal. Now, if you want to play three, you could probably add. You have Sheva, you have George Weah, you have. Whoever you wanna, you wanna put him right. So that's such a hard that. question. Yeah, <laughs> it's such a hard question for me. Kaká has to be one of those players that cannot move from there, just because. Okay, of what so he let's did. let's let's just name four players that VJ did not name. That no matter what position they would be in, right? Okay, right. let's go with goaltender. Are we are we with Dida, Steve? What are we gonna do, Sebastian Rossi? Sebastian uh, Rossi was good because of the team in front of him, right? Exactly. Uh, of the keepers, I think it would have to be Dida, just because he made the most saves. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> other players, other players out of those four, Steve. You mentioned Kaká. Uh, you know, people are saying, who, who, "Who would you pick, Sheva or Inzaghi?" Like, 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 we're not talking about positions here. Who we gotta fill? But if you had to pick between the two, who would you pick? <laughs> to be it's very honest, hard. for me it's hard there, but uh, <clears throat> I love I love Italians. I wear the crest very proudly. I don't even know what side I'm going there, yeah. but <laughs> Sheva Sheva was a generational talent, guys. We're not uh, besides besides the real Ronaldo. 
we're not going to see strength, pace, shot, uh, header, uh, speed. We're not going to see that in a, in a very long time, right? So, yeah, uh, Robert, Inzaghi, Robert, Inzaghi Robert, was also Robert. a very yeah. Inzaghi was also a very opportunistic striker. He was the the he was the the the, the king of the six yard box. He he scored goals, not pretty goals. Like he scored goals with his shin. You know, like uh, <laughs> it, it's all nice and everything, but he's also a byproduct of of that team, right? And unfortunately, Inzaghi has that black mark of playing for Juve, right? So. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so and, 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 and even being successful with Juve, right? So, uh, I have to, uh, I have to do that there. But then, I, I would it's have a good to. Choice. It's a good our, choice because Sheva is, uh, as Frank likes to remind us, because he's a history book that Sheva is the second all-time goal scorer, only behind uh, Gunnar Nordal. Uh, yeah. But in the end, Steve, you know this. The, the starting eleven is such a hard. It's such a hard thing to you know to, to 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 come down to. I know we just mentioned you mentioned Kaka, we mentioned Sheva. Uh, you know we, we could talk about you know defensively, but if we haven't seen like you know you VJ mentioned Gigi Rivera, me, me, me mentioned Gunnar Nordal. Yes, we know these guys, but have we ever seen them play? That's why it's such a hard question. But yeah, for, VJ for didn't me. say it was going to be easy, right? Steve? No, no. And, and, and VJ, for me, like if I would make that ultimate eleven. And it's not because they're not good players, but like the Nordahl and the Gigi Rivera, I, I would not be able to put them on my teams. I have never seen them, right? Yeah. So right. I, I would fill that that other that other uh, that center other center back spot by by Nesta, you know. So uh, right. uh, then you're gonna say, oh, but you're leaving out right. Costa Curta. Nesta, Nesta yeah. over like a Costa Curta. But exactly, but I I, right. I saw more of Nesta than I did see of of Costa Curta, right? Right. So, Right. Makes sense. And that's just a byproduct of my age you know, and, and and the soccer that I've been watching since I was nine, and, right? And this reminds me, Steve, we're going to do a special podcast like when nobody expects us. The really worst 11, starting yeah. 11 for Milan. That's what we're going to do. Vijay, we're going to call you on that one. I appreciate it. But uh, if we talk about you, I already have names called him ahead. And we, we mentioned him before, Constant, Mr. Kevin Constant. Hey, <laughs> food, African footballer. <laughs> uh, what was the, the African uh, Ballon d'Or? Yeah. Yeah. Kevin Constant, we don't, we don't uh, make fun. But okay, you have the last one for us. Right, the last one, right. So I kind of, kind of hit it when where, where you were speaking earlier, right? So simple, straight to the point. Big arrival, Juve or Inter. Uh, say, say, uh, repeat it one more time so we can we can digest the question. All right. Who do you all consider AC Milan's biggest rival? Juventus or Football Club International in Milan? Inter. Uh, to me, it's not even a discussion. I'm sorry. Like, if, if we, Steve, if we were 10 years ago, 11 years ago, everybody would be like, oh, Juventus is back, you know, in Serie A. We're happy for them, this and that. To me, it's Inter. That's my personal opinion. Uh, when I was there in 2011, they brought me to the uh, training grounds that was attached to a golf center. I spit on the doors of a piano gentile. That's the one much I hate Inter. I love you, Francis. But uh, it's Inter. Steve, you? No, for me, it's Juve. I want to be the I want to be the top, and I love that we have more Champions League than both. But uh, for me, the dominance in Serie A is something that uh, that's that's bothering me. Uh, it bothered me in the past uh, because Juve became Italy's team, and and we were so successful uh, on the international side, and they were successful uh, domestically. But I I always feel like it's it's Juve. I always feel the uh, I, I get that extra. That extra nerve twitches in my body when I watch Juve. All right. So uh, we're different. How about you, VJ? Who's the who's the number one on your list? Oh, Juve whole day, every day, twice on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> no, serious, because they, it, it, it's interesting because all right, I could I could I can't count. Okay, Let, let's look at you, right? We we have the Mutari goal not being given, right? We have the Tevez offside. We have the 2016 Supercoppa Italiana, the penalty that wasn't given, right? That's just three, I just named in the space of three seconds. But if you were to ask me, games against the Derby della Madonna, how many times can you remember times when the referees would have called games and favored Inter? I can't, I really, really can't. But with yeah. you, if you, if you give me an hour, 
I would probably come up with 50 instances. I okay, maybe not 50, I'm exaggerating. But let's say I could have come, I could probably come up with 20 instances that I've personally watched in the 25 years I've been following Milan of instances where the referees favor UV against Milan. But if you ask me to come up against Inter, I might come up with maybe two or three. You understand? So that's right. why I always oh, and I mean we always we always say, um, and you all you all will notice that the, the, the saying in Italy is you very team you love or hate, right? So <laughs> to me that to, to me Juve is always the always the bigger bigger rival. And it's uh, to me Inter is like maybe I'm again I when I converse with like if I converse with people in, in Italy it's interesting because a lot of the Milan fans based in Milan, they tell me they, they feel a stronger rivalry with Inter purely because of the fans that the fact that they, they, their wife or their husband or their cousin or, or their sister or their neighbor or their teacher might be an Inter fan. So there's that internal rivalry. They, they always see it. So when there is a game on a Sunday night, whoever wins or loses, get the bragging right. So you go to work on Monday morning or you go to school on Monday morning and there's that there's, there's that rivalry. But when I ask like Milan fans who don't live in, in Milano, they say they feel more the rivalry with UV. Again, again, it's 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 more based on a an individual basis, and to me, it's always it, 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 it's always you, always always um. All always right, and, and VJ, VJ, you can exaggerate on the show, all huh? right? Uh, yeah. Don't worry <laughs> about it. You exaggerate. You see, you're gonna, in in an hour, you're gonna okay, come VJ. out with a thousand five hundred people are gonna <laughs> believe you. It's all good, but yeah. uh, VJ, thank you so very much for these presidential points. We appreciate it very much. I know I'm on uh, two against one on the Juve versus Inter uh, thing, but uh, I wanted to take the time to thank you again for joining us, and uh, please let everybody know once again where they can find your work on Twitter, uh, on Facebook, wherever you do your stuff. Right. Okay. I uh, just want to say thanks again, guys, for having me on. It's a, it's a pre pre pleasure and a, a privilege to join you guys. Uh, fan of the show, uh, listen to it every every week. You all normally release it Tuesday, Wednesday, so I, I catch it like Wednesday, Tuesday, as the case may be. I greatly Thank appreciate you. it. And um, for those who want to find me, I'm at Trini Sports Guy at T capital T R I N I S, -S P O R T S G U I. I almost forget how to spell it. <laughs> yeah, so that's yeah. it at Trini Sports Guy. Thank you very much, and you're getting some compliments on the on the comments on YouTube. Uh, they're saying good job and uh, great, uh, great uh, guests for us today. So, VJ, thank you very much, and we'll talk soon, my friend. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Take care. All the best. Ciao, VJ. Stay home. Stay home. Stay safe. All Camarona te acompaña. Camarona te acompaña. Ciao. <laughs> Ciao. 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 Steve, uh, uh, great you're reaching out to VJ. Uh, I know you like to read his stuff and, and, and all this, uh, you know, his work on Twitter, but uh, uh, Robert and Jamie saying, good job, VJ. Uh, very good uh, good, uh, good host, but he wasn't a host. He was he was a guest for us. But uh, uh, thank you, Steve, for getting us this uh, presidential uh, point presenter. But at a certain point, he was bossing us. You know, like, Vinny, take it. That, VJ, you don't do that. Yeah, yeah he's telling yeah, us. Telling we it. decide who answers the question first. He's directing, he's directing yeah. the, the, the traffic. But you know what? Maybe we should get uh, Tommy on, uh, on a three-way call uh, soon from, uh, from his mansion, maybe. Or maybe we could get President to uh, join us from his bunker. Who knows? Who long? Uh, we're working uh, on someone else for next week. There, we have the hygiene specialist who will probably uh, interrupt your uh, your regularly scheduled program to uh, yes to, to to provide you breaking news on. Ta -da -da, ta -da -da. We need to get that that music there. Ta -da -da, ta -da -da, ta -da -da. And uh, and yes, my cousin uh, does work in the uh, hygiene uh, sector, so he's going to be able to come out and tell us anything about uh, keeping your phones clean. But in the end, Steve, let me go through some uh, Twitter questions. But first, I'm going to go through the Instagram question that you have to give me the, the logins because I got to log on. Because uh, Frank, uh, uh, Facebook Frank asks, what are your thoughts that Milan are going to make a push for Tonali that might, might include Gabbia and Cash in an exchange deal? And also, do you feel about Paqueta Castrovilli swap? Let's start with the Paqueta Castrovilli swap. Uh, I've read a couple of articles on that, Steve. You think there's any truth to that? Like a straight swap? Seriously? I don't know. I don't think so. But I read another thing today that said the, uh, that Fiorentina rejected that. So, guys, well, no, one's gonna, yeah. no one's going to take our garbage for their prize possession, right? So, uh, you, you, you're going to you want the Castrovilli? You want to inject Paqueta to lower the price? Yeah, sure. You want Tonali? You want to lower the price? Look, and you know what? Gabia, if he's the sacrificial lamb for uh, for uh, Tonali, 
I'm pretty sure, I'm hoping, Milan is intelligent enough to, to add that buyback clause for, uh, for Gabbia in case he does, he does pan out and become a stud a, a center back. But that's the way you have to do business. Use your Primavera to either lower the price or to sell to someone else to buy that person. And look, I'm all for the Tonali signing. I just, again, I have to repeat it. Guys, we're getting Tonali. We're not getting Pirlo. So you're but, gonna have to but, imagine your expectations. But do, Steve, do, do do you do you think that you know, looking at it this way, would Tonali going to Juve go for thirty million, but everybody else is gonna have to pay forty, fifty million for the guy? Like everybody seems to be thinking Tonali to Juve, Tonali to Juve. I I don't know. What do you think about that? I don't know. It's again, it's Juve working, uh, working the phones and working what they're gonna do. There's always some kind of side deal there. It's gonna be Tonali going to Juve and uh, for sure three, four uh, Primavera players going to Brescia and and I don't and you know what? I don't blame Brescia at a certain point because they need they need to stay in Serie A, right? Uh, like uh, this might have been a wild card for them, an unfortunate situation, but a wild card if they do not send anybody down, which they will stay up for another year. But I think Tonali's time at Brescia is over. Uh, if I'm Milan, I'm doing everything not to make Tonali go to to Juve, uh, because I think that that's a gamble that, that Milan needs to take, and I think that's somewhere where we need to address that position, and I think he would fit well with Benacer, ball hawking, and him sending out those so those sweet balls to whoever is going to be striking for us, right? So, exactly. Um, our friend the the snake. Francis, he wanted to ask a couple of questions, but uh, one of his questions was, uh, Steve, what was your favorite World Cup match that you watched? You know, like people, uh, that was Francis, he wanted to know who will we sign in Serie yeah, but let's go with the World Cup match, uh, that our favorite World Cup match. Uh, uh, you know, I'm going to have to go with, with the Germany game because for me, I was living in Ottawa at the time, I was working uh, two to 11 shifts every single day. And I remember asking that I was working six to three and my friend Adam, I'm like, Adam, can you work until like six so I can watch the game, you know, and uh, I'll cover you on the next time. So not only does the you know game end go into extra time, all that stuff. <laughs> and, uh, I remember walking in, it was like 637. He was so pissed off because he had been there for 530 in the morning and I'm there giving discounts to everybody who wants discounts let's go discounts for everybody i was a sales manager there at best buy for me it's got to be the germany game i know people want to talk about the finals but for me that's got to be the germany game because i actually cried i wept like a little boy but uh, that's my game i don't know about you Steve. if i go in 2006 to be very honest one of my favorite games was the australia game uh, that penalty shot in, in extra time. To be very honest, you guys, when uh, when when I say that my heart dropped, like I had no movement. I even remember where I was uh, watching it on the uh, the terrace at EXO uh, on a small TV, and I couldn't believe what was going on. Uh, but one of my favorite games, I think, is going to to shock it. Not shock everybody, but like in 1994, I was really getting into this uh, the, the, into the World Cup. I was really uh, I was really someone you know uh, who spent 1990 in the world uh, in Italy at the World Cup. But you know, nine years old, uh, understanding what's going on. First jersey, of course, is my Baggio Italy jersey that we just got back uh, with number 15 in the back, Italia Novanda. Ah, that feels so good. I got it back. And uh, so Czechoslovakia and Italy in 1990. I'll never forget that. Uh, I'll also forget, never forget uh, losing to Argentina. We were uh, a Bashumar in Calabria and losing in penalty shots against uh, against Argentina. But my favorite game is 1994 Roberto Baggio against Nigeria. That was something of I am on the map. Yeah. I should have started many more games in Italy in 1990, and ladies and gentlemen, Baggio arrived on the on the scene, and we were and losing that game, Steve. Like yeah. until the 88th minute, and I remember because I was watching my cousin Johnny, and we were at a bar, and I always remember old Italian men throwing chairs on the wall 
after they scored and it's like because just before it's like oh my god we're gonna lose we're gonna lose to nigerians we're gonna lose to nigerians and uh yeah no definitely great uh great so memories for me. when he scores that second goal uh we obviously watching it with my cugino pasquale in the basement of uncle frank's house and we run upstairs and i ripped off the hand handle of the stairs going up to uh, uh my uncle's home uh, which we had to kindly explain to him why and he did not understand why because he didn't care uh gino farino has two questions i'm going to finish off with uh, these ones uh, steve uh, first one is on a scale of one to ten how much do you trust gazidas okay hold on how much do i tr trust gazidas to do what okay so uh, let's let's go on let's go on not anything specific what he's done or what he's talked about his persona, his what he the, the 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 luggage that he brings with him, is he the right man for the position? Is he the one to steer us in the right way? Whether it take a year, Steve, or six years? Financially, uh, yes. If he does, if if he doesn't get involved in the soccer operations, financially, yes. If he starts putting his nose into the the, the into the soccer project. Then I have absolutely a huge problem. Financially, I trust him eight out of ten because I don't think anybody's ten out of ten. And I think he 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 righted the ship at Arsenal for uh, for a similar type of board, a board that wanted to see the green, wanted to see uh, positive, and wanted and 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 used Arsenal as a a money making machine, right? Yeah. If I if you tell me Gazidis is going to be involved in picking a coach saying who we should and we should not buy. Uh, unfortunately, I'm going to tell you, I trust him one out of 10. He's not a soccer guy. Uh, he is not, he doesn't have the experience. He has the experience of, uh, uh, of finances, but, but soccer is a different thing, uh, right? So, you know, remember we had the salary cap, Vinny? Remember yeah, the salary yeah. cap? Remember how now, now we have tweets and, and, and articles where he's going to blow out the salary cap to, to, to sign Romagnoli, right? Yeah. So like you, you got to take things in, in, with a grain of salt, right? It's like someone reports salary cap. What is that salary cap? Uh, and when is it time to break the bank, right? And, and, he's, and if, if we get out of this and when we get out of this whole uh, virus situation and, and, and live sports does come back, and we come back to normal, whatever normal is, this team's going to have a lot of work to do, and, and they're going to have a lot of decisions to make. And, and, and I cannot have him in the, in the soccer realm of decision-making. Yeah, I'm going to go with 5 out of 10 on that one because I don't think we've seen enough. And uh, a lot of the stuff that came out against him, he hasn't come out and, you know, uh, uh, defended himself with the whole Boban situation. So I'm just going to go five out of 10 because I'm not going to start sitting here with you, Steve, and pretend I know the financials or the other uh, side of the, you know, the other side of the coin. So five out of 10. And his last question, Steve, what are the best quarantine dishes you guys have made since uh, the quarantine? Oh, guys, yesterday, Steve, Stevie P yesterday, I'm looking straight at you guys. Agnello, baby lamb chops coming from United. I'm going to plug the United because that's where they came from. We marinated them. I found something. I'm not going to take the other because I'm not going to take the credit. It's not my recipe. It's not my marinade. But uh, I found something online where it was a balsamic, uh, a balsamic paprika uh, marinade that I left for 24 hours. And then we put them on the grill, two minutes each side. They came out, they came out rare to medium rare, guys. And, and they were like a mix of salt and sweet and it was fantastic so th that's my you know my my wife i'm gonna give her some credit too she came up with this chicken parmesan wow like a chicken and veal parmesan because she doesn't eat veal she's weird like that but she made like half chicken half veal parmesan with like a bocconcini on top and oh oh my god guys steve, steve is living large steve is, uh, uh, the only thing that i made special was you know, cooked up some uh, eggplants, uh, zucchinis, uh, chopped them up in cubes, uh, onions, uh, carrot, celery, and then I, I, I took a salmon and I, I chopped it up and I cooked it all with the, the, the veggie. Oh, 
watch out, <laughs> watch out, me. President's gonna kill you. But uh, Steve, your meal was a lot more exciting. Yeah, oh, than- oh, guys, guys, I, we had lamb burgers the other night. <laughs> Lamb burgers, yeah, really? lamb burgers with like a sesame Kaiser bun, homemade <laughs> coleslaw. Like had a little bit of apples and had the and had some uh, sliced almonds inside. Fantastic with just a little bit of provolone, a little bit of marinated eggplants. With the the uh, the coleslaw vinia was something that you had to. Larry, eat. Larry wants to know how did you marry a woman that doesn't eat veal. My wife, it's I don't very know. special, Larry. She, she, she makes uh, bignolata. Larry, she makes bignolata. That's why, Larry. <laughs> I know. I know that your wife. Everything has to be well done. There's no such thing yeah. as spicing your meat Larry. or like. Uh, no, no. Well done. No salt and pepper. Just give it to me as is. She's, she's yesterday. Well yesterday we had a beautiful bavette again from United because. <laughs> Obviously, I did a big, big run at United, bought all kinds of meat. So this bavette was marinated, and I don't know what. It was fantastic. So you had my four-year-old and my uh, six-year-old eating it raw, bloody raw. There was blood dripping from Jeff Franco and Angelina's. Uh, they looked like vampires. And then you had Sandy with a little piece. It was like this big, burnt. It looked like a hockey puck. <laughs> hey, to each their own, to each their own. Steve, any uh, indigestions for this week? <sighs> Indigestions. I don't know. To be very honest, you guys, I'm I'm very mellow. I'm very mellow. It was Easter. Do you know what? I don't know. Indigestion. I had all kinds there. We just destroyed brioche because I ate so much. But uh, you know, my indigestion is there's still, you know, unfortunately, still we get a lot of U.S. coverage, and they're still making it a political game, and they're they're not thinking about the actual frontline people and 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 like the, the the end goal of getting a cure to the coronavirus. That's my indigestion, to be very honest. I'm kind of sick of hearing it. Uh, you know, stay home, uh, enjoy your families. It's very hard. It's hard for everybody. Everybody's situation is different, but like, don't make it political. It's not for Democrats and and Republicans, and it's not for uh, liberals and and conservatives. It, it's it's just people, right? One team, and and let's get this over with, and let's go back to normal again, to whatever normal will be. But at least to be able to go out of the house to Vinny, we could finally do the podcast again together. Yeah, yeah. I, I looked forward to you coming over, like, you know, every Monday, even though it was only for half an hour, an hour, and it's like a, a little break from there. But in the end, yeah, like, you know what, guys? Uh, this is the, the, the hand we've been dealt, and uh, this is the way we're going to go about it, and we'll, we'll get it through it. And I, I know the government paid me double uh, when they were supposed to give me, so... At least I'm covered for the next couple of months, but uh, I know I'm going to have to pay them back anyway. So. Guaranteed. Yeah, and uh, your feel-good moment, anything uh, feel-good, your brioche of the week? It looks like Italy's uh, Italy's curve is, is flattening, guys. So yeah. that's, that's good. They were the country that was hit the hardest so far, and uh, the States is next there. So hopefully the States and, the, and, and Canada and Italy can flatten this curve and everybody else could flatten the curve and, and uh, either come up with some kind of vaccine or let us be able to go back to normal. Uh, that's my feel good moment. Uh, a little bit of positivity doesn't, doesn't hurt there, but that's my feel good moment. Yeah, I know. Definitely agree with you on that one. And before closing off, uh, Jamie uh, Drummer asks us, where is Serie A going to start again, you think? I Hopefully next September. Next year. Next year. I don't think it's uh, nothing's happening in August, uh, like they were saying, uh, take back the uh, the season. So, yeah, Steve. and I also we, we have to remember uh, we're gonna we're gonna send out uh, our condolences to Richard Richard from uh, yes. Serie Sit Down, who uh, lost his father to uh, COVID nineteen. Uh, I don't Richard's know the been, I, no, we, we don't know, know the details, details, details. but uh, you know, Richard's been our friend. We've been on his podcast. Has been on ours. Yeah, Richard and uh, Frank uh, there. So giving out. Uh, heartfelt condolences to Richard and the Seria sit down family, Frank and everybody. Uh, I wanted to do it on the podcast, not uh, not via tweet. So I'll send uh, v- uh, Richard a nice uh, um, personalized we, message there. We love you, buddy, and we're here. Uh, we're here with you, and then yeah, we're gonna get through this. So, guys, thank you very much uh, to everybody listening in watching i know we're not as much as we used to be but hey we're gonna keep on doing this and uh, who knows maybe uh, steve and i soon we're gonna be connected connected together and uh, for now uh, we're gonna do this uh, video a uh, video kind of calling and uh, steve's working on our next guest for next week so steve thank you very much for that and uh, 
have yourself a fantastic evening. You too. Avunque sempre, guys. Forza Milan. Forza Milan. Have a good night, guys. Ciao.